What's up, everyone? Welcome to Desmond's Garage. I'm Desmond. Today we have a fun project building a testing rig for tube amplifiers. So what's a tube amplifier? Basically, um, their predecessors to transistors. They were invented over 100 years ago. Um, and they used to make everything out of them, radios, TVs, uh, stereos, and guitar amplifiers. And I'm building a hi-fi stereo uh, with vacuum tubes, and I want a way to run diagnostics on it. Now, if you're just getting started with tube amplifier electronics, you can get really far with just a multimeter. It measures voltage, it measures resistance, it does basically, well, it does almost everything you need to do. You don't have to do this if you're getting started. Get yourself a multimeter, get going. But I wanted something a little more, uh, a little more capable. And one of the joys of, uh, Doing things is to make your own tools. So I have, uh, I got this rack, blank rack setup. This is a 4U deep uh, rack thing. So it's about seven inches tall, 19 inches wide, standard rack. And I am going to cut out a lot of things on this to put in different components. So what am I gonna mount in here? I've got a Variac, I've got auxiliary power outputs. I've got a bunch of different voltmeters so I can measure the voltages, the voltage of different parts of the circuit all at the same time instead of using my multimeter and kind of dancing around. Uh, there's going to be a signal generator, I hope. We'll talk about that more later. There's going to be a dummy load. So instead of always having uh, speakers plugged in, because when you're testing tube amplifiers or when you're running them, you always have to have them plugged into something, either a speaker or a dummy resistor or the output transformers will fry basically. Don't try it. So if I'm testing these, I don't want them plugged into nice speakers. And sometimes I don't want them plugged into any speakers. So I'm going to have dummy resistors built into this, which I can uh, toggle to regular speakers if I want to hear things. And um, one or two other little niceties. Uh, again, since I'm doing it myself, I want to nerd out over it. So how are we going to do this? Everything's going to fit on this panel, and this panel has to mount into a box. So step one is going to be a build to build a box out of this plywood I had lying around. It's not really square or flat. It's mostly flat, but it's been sitting outside for a while. So we'll see how that goes. We may have to bail on that and get some like new wood. Uh, but I'm hoping I can reuse what I've got to make the box, and then the box will kind of fit around this panel. And then we will punch holes in the panel to fit the different measurement devices, inputs, outputs, plugs, jacks, so on and so forth. That's going to be a pain in the ass because cutting square holes in metal is not easy or fun. There's a bunch of great videos out there that um, show different techniques of how to do it. I always fumble my way through it. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I got a lot of stuff to cram in here, so things might get a little tight. But... So always we'll figure it out. So step one is to find the straightest parts, the least twisted parts of all this wood, and see if I can make a box that's going to be uh, 19 inches wide, uh, just over 7 inches tall, and probably about 8 inches deep. This doesn't need to be super deep. Uh, most of the panel mount components don't go that far, except for the Variac, which goes maybe five or six inches, but I want to have enough space to put in other circuitry and um, plenty of room to wire it up. But also not have it be so big that it takes up a lot of my tiny workspace here. So I'm figuring about eight inches deep, should be fine. And once that's done, then we'll get to the panel. And then the last step is wiring all together. So stay tuned, hang tight, let's do it.
So now we have ourselves a box. This little purple box. I put these mounting plates in first, which this panel will mount on. That fits pretty well. Um, I put them in already because I wanted to have the extra space to work on screwing them in. But now that I've done that, I kind of want to be able to round off these edges a bit, these inside edges. And I can't really get a router in there with these things in. So I may take them back out, as I would do again. But this is pretty much done, as we say. Um, may need a little cross bracing. I don't know, this thing is not going to be super heavy duty. So next steps, now that the box is built, is getting this panel. I could have done the panel first, but I wanted to start with the box. I feel like I made some progress. So, oops. Let's go here. We have the mounting holes on either side. And I have to cut out a bunch of mounting holes in this panel, the different instruments that I have. It's going to be a combination of round holes for switches and indicator lights and square holes for uh, voltmeters, for uh, IEC outlets, for my power switch, was a, which is a square toggle switch or rocker switch. So my plan for that is I've drawn everything up in Figma, a design program and uh, everything's to scale and done my layout. So then I'm gonna print that off and tape it to this. And then from there, I will have all of my, um, I can draw or trace out all of my cut points. So for the holes that are round, I'll just uh, center punch them. And then for the holes that are square, uh, like I said earlier, there's different ways to do it going to be kind of whatever I feel like. I might just use my jigsaw. Jigsaws work pretty well. Uh, you drill two holes on opposite corners, and then you can get the jigsaw blade in, and then you just kind of meet in that corner. Then you can clean it up with a file. I'm not this... sure if I'm going to keep this black powder coat finish. It looks pretty nice. I was kind of thinking of doing a crimson color, but then this wood is crimson. We'll see. But using it to sew. Not going to drill itself. Let's do it. We're back here with our panel. What I've done is printed out on this paper my layout, which is done to scale. There's a lot going on here. Um, these little dots are the center of the circles. It's where I'm going to uh, center punch them to use as reference for my drill bits when I drill them out. The inner white circles here are the holes I need to drill out for the component to go through. Then the outer black holes are the overall shape that the thing takes out. So for example, these are RCA jacks. And to mount them in the panel, you have to drill a hole through uh, 0.3 inches. I measured this to be about 0.3 inches. So that's the size you need to drill out. But the whole thing, with the nut and whatever that holds it on, and maybe a little plastic piece, a plastic piece and some of these other components, that comes out to this larger diameter. And it was important to measure the larger diameter so that as I'm doing the overall layout, I know how closely these components can be to each other. Because the hole may be small. For example, this is a potentiometer, a little knob that rotates. I only need to drill out a small hole, but the whole thing is much larger. And so if I had put these holes close together, then the actual component components wouldn't have fit. So you need both. And similarly with these rectangular components, we have the outer rectangle, which is the overall panel, this inner rectangle, which is the cutout. And with this, we have two circles. These are 3 eighths. Um, to cut out these rectangles, as I mentioned, I'm going to drill holes in the corners and then use a jigsaw to meet the other corners coming from these both sides. So by drilling these little pilot holes, I can get uh, the rectangle I can use the jigsaw to cut out the rest of the rectangle and finish it with a file. One open question is, as I cut this up, it's probably going to destroy the paper. So I'm not sure how I'm going to transfer, you know, if I'm cutting up this paper and I lose this clean edge, this edge is, because it's not in the metal, I can't, I don't have a, a good way of cutting up to it. Because the paper may 
shred off the line and then not show me what I want. So we'll kind of get to that. We'll deal with that as we get to it. The first step, take my center punch and make little punch marks in the center of all these holes that are going to get drilled out so that when I come over with my drill, I'm going to first use a little pilot drill to get these holes started. It will sit cleanly or want to go into the divot created by the center punch. So we'll start with that, punch everything out. I want to do the variac first because it has these big mounting tabs, which I didn't spec out. I know they're around here. I'm not sure where exactly they are. And there's a couple of overlapping radii of the different parts of the variac. And I want to make sure that this uh, ammeter is going to fit in. I'm pretty sure it will. I mean, that's how layout works. It should work. But sometimes you screw things up, in my case. Regularly, you screw things up, so it's not a bad idea to do a little work and pause and check your work before coming back and doing everything else if you need to make an adjustment. In the worst case, this panel was like $8. I can always buy a new one. That doesn't mean we need to be careless. So, step one, center punch time. Most of the parts mounted up. So satisfying.
All right, our wiring is mostly done. I'd say we're about 95% of the way there. So I wanted to pause and talk you through a little bit of this rat's nest, rat's nest talk a bit about construction uh, before we mount it up and start doing some testing. So starting at the beginning, we have our input switch here. This switch is uh, both the hot and neutral. Um, we don't switch ground. Ground is just run separately. Um, and it's also got a pilot light built in, so that's why we need uh, both of our wires. We can't just switch one like you would with a normal toggle switch. Switch goes to um, main voltage uh, meter here. measures a bunch of things. Uh, we want that right at the beginning, right before anything else happens. So we're capturing all the power and all the measurements taken from the rest of the testing rig. The switch is wired straight into these two terminals, so the switch will control them. If the switch is off, these terminals, ter I'm saying terminals, these are plugs, just regular outlet sockets. Uh, so by turning the switch off, it will also turn these switches off. From there, coming off of the switched sockets, we move up to the variac section, and the first stop is at this uh, switch. So we're switching the hot wire uh, on that side. On this side is this indicator light, uh, which is plugged into a 5-volt circuit. So when I throw the switch on, it connects uh, my hot wire and also turns on the light, so I know that the variac is active. And then it runs over to this fuse, and from this fuse, you see in here, yeah, this wire comes in to my variac input. So the variac has two inputs. It's got this black wire and then uh, the white neutral. Um, neutral's coming in. Where's it coming in? Um, oh, yeah, just off this thing. So it comes up here, goes in, and then this one leg, the neutral leg, goes over to the variac output. Um, variac output, the socket output for the variac. And the variac output, if you will, the wiper arm, comes off on this uh, yellow black wire. That comes in through my ammeter and over to the socket. So this is the socket that will um, put out however many volts are chosen on the ammeter. This is what I'm usually going to be plugged into. And this is a, another voltmeter, which you can see is wired in directly across these terminals to measure the actual voltage across um, this. The knob for the Variac has a voltage reading on it, which will be pretty good, um, but it's nice to have a very accurate reading if I'm trying to compensate for changes in wall voltage, or you know, I really want to say, okay, is it 122 volts today versus 118? Um, that can affect my output readings on the, um, the circuit I'm trying to test. So it's nice to know, it's nice to have a good um, accurate ground, not ground, uh, baseline, um, to start off with. Coming over to this business, so there's a lot going on here. Um, we'll start with the simple thing, which are these three DC voltmeters. We each have their binding posts. Each of these binding posts, again, has the white wire, wire coming off the hot into the input, and then um, the optional negative goes first to the switch. The switch also, um, the switch switches between this and then the chassis ground, that green wire. Um, I'm kind of mixing wiring color codes Anything that is touching uh, socket stuff uses socket wiring of like uh, black for hot, white for neutral, and green for ground. Beyond that, I switched to a sort of red-black for DC ground. Um, these came with this kind of white-black for input voltages. Um, you can see here I'm keeping the green for chassis ground of the switch, and then a black wire coming off of the negative. Because uh, it's DC. It should be a DC voltage here. So these three are all independently, uh, they're all independent. They each have their own inputs. Um, I have wired their, they're driven off 5 volts though, and I have wired all these together just for kind of clarity so I don't have to run three wires to my um, power bus. I just have these two wires. Let's go up here. These are my temperature sensors. Each of these units has two temperature sensors. It's got uh, two little readouts on it, and then each of these plugs 
is it uh, corresponds to one of the readouts. And each plug has two connectors. There's the one in the center and then the one on the outside. RCA connectors are great for this because you have two connectors. I don't have to get um, funny with plugs or anything. If you're doing panel mount connectors that need two contacts, RCA plugs are great unless you need some shielding. I don't think these need to be shielded. We'll find out, I guess, when I plug it in. Busy part. So there's two things going on here. Up here is the function generator section. Uh, we have our adjustment pots. These are our output jacks and then switches for turning them on and off. Down here is the um, input, if you will. This is where the speakers uh, come in. We have our two binding posts here for left and right. Um, and then the view meters that read off of uh, the signal. There's also a switch over here, which switches between um, either the dummy load resistors or the actual speakers the speakers for live sound output, and then it's also plugged into an indicator lamp, which will turn on when I have the speakers going. So if there's no sound, and I expect there to be sound, there's an easy way to confirm that. And these uh, VU meters have plugs coming off them. One powers the backlight, and the other uh, drives the needle. The big part here is this function generator. So this is the kit that I bought off Amazon. These kits are all over the place. They use some chip, does all this stuff. And it's built so that it's a standalone kind of box that you would plug into a 9-volt battery. Um, instead, I've run some wires off this so I can plug it into my 12-volt power bus. I'm going to have 5 volts and 12 volts. Um, I assembled the kit just on its own, which included this barrel connector. Um, I'm not going to use that because I don't have an extra barrel connector. And it was just as easy to run solder these wires in. Um, rather, after I put this together, I realized I didn't have a barrel connector. So then I added the wires onto the bottom. Um, if I thought this through, I probably wouldn't have put this in and just soldered the wires directly to the board like I did with these other ones. But these will connect to 12 volts, positive and negative. And there are supposed to be potentiometers that mount to this board. You can see on the left amplitude, the center fine, in the right course. These are frequency adjustments. This is volume, basically. Um, but potentiometers mounted directly to the circuit board would not help me in my panel. So I've put the potentiometers in my panel. Um, these are not the ones that came with the kit, which are PCB mount. These are panel mount. And attached in the panel. And then coming off the uh, outputs, these are sort of they are actually PCB mount. Um, so I've broken up a piece of a PCB to bridge um, the posts on the potentiometers with the wires coming off of it. So the amplitude, light. this is coarse, and then this is fine. So then it's just a matter of running these wires off of that into their corresponding solder points on the board. It wasn't too hard to put this together. If you're doing a maneuver like this, I recommend using zip ties, uh, which not only keep your wires organized, but it also provides some strain relief. So when you're pulling the, on one wire, it can weaken the joint. And so by using these cable ties, it kind of spreads that load out across all the wires, makes things a little stronger. Now, when this is mounted in, it's not going to be an issue, but it's good practice. And it's good practice to follow good practice. And yeah, so let's get this thing mounted up and then we can test it, see if it works. <laughs> oh my God, pretty cool. So far, so good. Things have turned on. Um, things have turned on. Let's, uh, now what do we do? Let's try 
this. Nothing. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Variac seems to be working as it should. As I rotate it, so this is kind of my marker here. Zero. And then this is reading whatever it's set to. 60. It reads 64. So. Looks like that's about on. Got you in tight here just to show off the Variac and uh, this little ammeter. So we have plugged in here a light bulb and it's an incandescent light. Um, if it were an LED, um, the changing voltage would not work quite right. But here we can see, okay, we're set at 24 volts, a little bit of light. The light is here off camera. And as I turn this up, the light gets brighter. The voltage is going up. So this is controlling the voltage. As the voltage goes up, we can see it's slowly drawing more and more current. So now we're at 76 volts, and this is about one and a quarter amps. Uh, this is a 200 watt light bulb, which is the only incandescent I had around. And bingo. Let's see, I don't have any way to test the function generator right now. Um, this switches my inputs here uh, from speakers to dummy variables, and then I have my DC meters. So to test those, we have little things here. to test this um, let me check a battery so One, two, one. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, this is only one and a half volts, so I guess that makes sense. Not that exciting. Um, we usually be measuring things that are much better. I guess it works. It's a clear victory and move on. Uh, the other thing I want to try is these temperature sensors. Already we know it's backwards, right? When I plug this in the bottom, it doesn't want to go in the bottom. Uh, so, what does that mean? So there are two plugs that come off of, uh, there's a plug that comes off of each of these RCA jacks, so I just need to plug them into the other headers. But, you can see, there's the white one, registering 60.2 degrees, a little chilly tonight. Put this in my hand. It starts to go up. 63, 64. Nice being a warm blooded person. So, uh, pretty cool. I'm going to check the um, function generator offline. Um, I don't have an easy way to test that right now. But, haha, <laughs> looks pretty good. Um, looks pretty good. I'm happy with this. This is going to be really useful. Guys, to round out this video, I'm filming this clip sometime after the earlier part of it was filmed. I've had a chance to put this into use. I've been using it on several amps I've built, and I've learned a lot about what I like about this and what I don't like about it. So I wanted to wrap things up with a sort of a review of what's working, what I would do differently if I were going to do this again, which I'm not, but you might. And so I hope you can learn from what I've learned the hard way. So overall, super useful. I love having this one unit that I 
pull out when it's time to do testing on one of my tube amplifiers. It's got a bunch of things um, all in one place. The overall idea is really good, but there's a bunch of things that I do not use. At the top of the list is this signal generator. This is like an $8 thing I got off Amazon. It's really for school use to, I guess, practice soldering and just like make different sounds. But for testing stereos, testing stereos where you need a really precise sine wave or square wave or whatever, you want to dial in the frequency, you want to dial in the amplitude, it's not up to it. It's a toy, it's sort of whatever. So I ended up getting a separate unit, an old Heath kit for that. It's worked really well. And I don't use this at all. And it was such a pain in the ass to build in here. I <laughs> it pains me to watch the clips of me putting this all together. Uh, but do not build in a janky signal generator into your testing unit. It's not worth it. I also don't really use these temperature sensors. I thought I would as I build amplifiers into these tiki, uh, tiki logs. I wasn't sure how the heat would transfer. I thought it would be nice to measure that. And I really don't. It's really been fine. If I were to rebuild this, I might keep one of these units. Each of these units has two measurements. So two might be nice. I don't need four. I probably don't need any. But one seems cool. And other things I don't use are the switchable negative for these high voltage voltmeters. Uh, with the switch down, it ties the negative into kind of system ground, which is usually what I'm measuring my amplifier voltage off of. What, what's my voltage over ground? And because the amp's ground is tied into uh, testing rig ground, they're the same thing. I only have to run one wire into my amp to test the voltage instead of two. That's really nice. I don't ever run a sort of manual override ground with one exception. So if I were to do this again, I would get rid of all these grounds and switching things. It wouldn't save me on space, which I think is why I put it in anyway, but it was a lot of extra work to construct and I don't use it. If I did need to have um, take a measurement off of a thing that was not uh, amplifier ground, I would just use my voltmeter. That's kind of a rare exception and you don't need to build exceptions into these things. That said, one thing I would like, these are all high voltage voltmeters. They measure zero to 500 volts, uh, but they don't have tenths of a volt. So if I'm measuring something low voltage, like a filament circuit, which is typically at 6.3 volts DC, these will only show five volts or six volts or sometimes seven if it's too high. I don't really get the fidelity, the precision that I want. So I would add a lower voltage, like a 12 volt um, DC voltmeter specifically for that. And in that case, I would include a negative terminal because I'm not always measuring um, filament voltages to chassis ground. Sometimes it's measured off the two legs of that transformer winding. So I would add low voltage, a low voltage voltmeter. I would keep these and ditch the uh, negative terminals. The rest of the stuff I use quite a bit. The uh, dummy speaker loads slash like switchable speakers I use all the time. The amp always has to be plugged into some kind of output load and it's really nice having that here and being able to switch between I don't want to hear it and I do want to hear it. The Variac I use all the time. I plug everything, everything, all my amps into the Variac output. Even if I'm going straight to wall voltage, it's nice being able to dial this Variac into precisely 120 volts, regardless of what is showing off the wall. I could just take the wall, feed into one of these, but it's nice knowing I'm starting with 120 when I'm measuring voltages inside the thing instead of well, today it's 123, tomorrow it's 118, whatever. So I use this all the time. It's also really nice having an ammeter in series with this so I can see how much current the amp is drawing, how close I am to blowing a fuse, and what's my overall power draw. This toggle switch is also really nice with a light indicating when, uh, when this outlet is active. And I sometimes use these. It's nice having them here. And this little display is cool. So I'm happy with that. So other things I would add, a couple more high voltage voltmeters. It's really nice being able to measure several things at once. 
what's the voltage of my output transformer, what's the voltage of my preamp tubes. But what would be really nice is being able to measure left and right channels simultaneously. I built stereo amplifiers. They have left channels and right channels. So it's nice to know if the voltages on these corresponding left and right tubes are the same. Usually they are, but again, it would be nice to have everything just plugged in all at once so I can see them shifting uh, in tandem or unison or whatever. Now, if I got rid of these, I might have space for one or two more of these panels, which would seem to suggest a larger form factor. I didn't really want anything larger than this. You could go a little taller, then you'd have plenty of room for extra voltmeters and whatever. But with this big chunk of the Variac and all this other power supply stuff, there wasn't as much room to maneuver with this size. So, yeah, ditching these components, the signal generator, and both of these um, temperature sensors, I could probably get two more, maybe three of these, uh, including a low voltage voltmeter. So that's the big change that I would make. Otherwise, super fun, very useful, very cool looking. I love having the lights. Who doesn't love having these lights turn on and off? And of course, some toggle switches to play with. So it's been a great project. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. If you decide to make one of these for yourself, uh, learn from what I've learned. And I hope you have a great time and do not shock the shit out of yourself. So until then, until next time, stay groovy.